One of the most common problems that you're going to run into as a web developer is trying to get a footer to stick at the bottom of the viewport. In this video, you'll learn exactly how to do that. The cleanest solution to solve this right now is the following. So you have to look at your structure. So here, this is a typical structure in the HTML. I have a header, I have a main and I have a footer and I have collapsed these sections here just so we have a better overview. So here we have the footer and you need to identify the parent element of the footer. For me, that's the body element actually, right? So in HTML, the body element is like any other element. Um, we can select it, we can style it, and this is the parent element of the footer. Now, if you're working in a React app or Angular or Vue, you may have like an app component, right? So the app component may then be the parent element. Some of you may actually have some kind of container around it, right? So you may have some kind of container element and then everything is in the container element. In that case, the container element is the parent element of the footer, right? So you need to identify your parent element. For me, that's the body. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna select the parent element. I'm just gonna select by tag. And here, the first thing we need to do is actually make the body 100% of the viewport height, because that's one of the issues here. And I can show you that if I quickly inspect here, let's see, right? So here I can change the height of the viewport, right? So this is what we call the viewport. That's the visible area of the web page. And you can see the body right now, if I select this, the blue area does not extend all the way to the bottom because there's not enough content, right? So the body right now is not taking up a hundred percent of the viewport. So that's the first step that we have to do. We want to say to the body, take up at least 100% of the viewport height. Now it could be bigger. We can have more content and we'll get a scroll bar in that case, but it should be at least 100% of the viewport height. When I do that and the refresh, now the um, body does indeed take up 100% of the viewport, right? That's the first step that you have to do on the parent element. The second step is to uh, solve this uh, footer problem with Flexbox. That's really the cleanest solution. I'll show you some other solutions that people have come up with and I'll show you why those are not good solutions. The cleanest solution is with Flexbox. So on the parent element, you're going to make this a so-called flex container. When you do that, all the child elements, the header, main and footer are going to sit on the same row. So you're going to get this weird layout. That's not what we want. We don't want a row layout. We want to keep that vertical column layout. So we're going to change this back to column. So we can say flex direction column. When we do that, we get the old layout back. And now you could say nothing has changed, but that's not true because now we have unlocked the Flexbox uh, functionalities. And so what we can do, is we can select the footer and we can do the following that will solve that sticky footer issue. We can say margin on the top of this footer should be auto. And when we do that, ta-da, it's, co it's completely solved because with margin top auto, it's going to put as much margin um, between itself and the next element as possible, which will push itself down to the bottom, right? So this is really the cleanest solution because even if we change the height of the header or the footer itself, it will always work, right? So it, this solution does not depend on the height of something else. And when I add more content to the main, just to prove to you that this always works as well, like this, if I add more content to the main section, the main section grows and the footer stays at the bottom here. Now we could add some margin on the bottom of the main just to add some space between them, but you can see it works, right? Let me actually undo this. Right, so in case you're not familiar with Flexbox, it's really important that you learn Flexbox. It's the, mo it's the most powerful layout module in CSS. You're gonna run into it all the time. And if you don't know Flexbox yet, you probably all don't, also don't know CSS Grid. There are probably other gaps in your CSS knowledge that you need to fix. So I have a whole course on CSS. I highly recommend you go through that if you wanna be a front-end or full-stack developer because CSS is something that you're gonna run into over and over again and it doesn't take that long to master it. So just go through the course and you'll master it in no time. Check it out, the link is in the description. Okay, now there are some other uh, solutions that people have come up with over the years. So one solution that some people try to use is position absolute. So what they do is they do something like this, position absolute. They'll do something like uh, bottom zero. So it should set zero pixels from the bottom, right? You could you could make the width a hundred percent. Let's quickly do that, right? And now they think they have solved it, but actually, what what you do with this is you 
with position absolute is you take it out of the normal flow. So as you add more content, you're gonna run into an issue which is actually the following. So this is not a good solution um, because it depends on, on some other issue basically that you don't have an, that you don't have more content later, right? So it's just, it's, not, it's just not the best solution, right? Another solution that um, people sometimes try to do is they try to give the uh, main element a particular height. So they're gonna say main and then they'll try using the calc uh, function here. So they'll say well the main is gonna be should be should get a height of a hundred percent or probably a min height so hundred percent of the viewport height minus the height of the header right the header could be something like 60 pixels and then minus the height of the footer which is maybe something like 40 pixels right it's not the correct uh, height and width of the of the header and uh, footer in this case i don't i don't know the exact numbers but you're gonna get something like this where it also looks like um it sits at the bottom and it actually does sit at the bottom um but the problem here is that your solution now depends on the height of the header and the footer so whenever that changes, you're going to have to get into this calc number, calc function and change the numbers, right? So this is also not a very clean solution because you're going to get very messy code, right? Another solution that people sometimes try to do is use CSS grid. Now, CSS grid is simply quite tricky to work with, in my opinion. Flexbox is much easier. I don't recommend using CSS grid that often. Actually, I have a whole video on this on uh, YouTube as well about Flexbox versus CSS grid. You want to use Flexbox in the vast majority of cases because it's easier to use, right? But if you want to learn CSS grid as well, it's it's useful in certain components, certain layouts, and I would say this is not one of them. But definitely check out my CSS course if you want to learn CSS grid as well. All right. Now some of you may actually want a footer that scrolls with the with the user as the user scrolls down. So what you can do is you can also say position fixed to make to fix it to the viewport itself. So you can say position fixed, and you're gonna get the same issue with the width. So we also have to say width 100%. Right, so now it's fixed to the viewport. So if there is enough content and the user scrolls down, let's see. Yeah, so now we have more content. And as I scroll down, you can see that the footer um, well sticks to the viewport bottom. So you can do that with position fixed. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.